Gogoraz volunteers are able to use relatively low-cost tools to collect a wide variety of atmospheric data across multiple points of the water cycle. In this video, we will briefly overview each one of these tools, which measurements they provide, and what part of the water cycle it relates to. This 4-inch diameter plastic rain gauge is used to measure daily precipitation, most notably rain, and is accurate to the nearest 1 100th of an inch. In the water cycle, precipitation is a huge part of how water gets from the sky down to the ground. Each measurement, typically taken once a day, usually around 7 a.m., helps meteorologists better understand how variable precipitation can be. The gauge also has one more trick up its sleeve, snow. By removing the funnel and inner tube, the new snow falls into the outer cylinder, allowing you to then melt and measure whatever lands in the gauge. The 24-hour amount measured can be a combination of rain and melted snowfall. This brings us to our next tools. The snowboard and ruler are used to measure the depth of new snowfall, which is also a part of daily precipitation. When combined with the 4-inch diameter plastic rain gauge, you can also take a core sample of the new snow on the board to confirm the water content of new snowfall, which is called snow water equivalent. Additionally, the ruler can also be used to measure the total depth of snow, and a separate core sample can be done to measure the snow water equivalent of the total amount of snowpack that is currently on the ground. Next comes hail. Here we use what's called a hail pad, which is a piece of foam wrapped in heavy-duty aluminum foil. Hail is also considered precipitation, but it's measured by counting and analyzing the impacts from the collisions across the hail pad. You can also use a ruler to measure the diameter of the hail, or the water equivalent from the hailstones that fall into the outer cylinder of the gauge. But not while it's hailing! Always remember, safety first when it comes to taking your measurements. Now on to another part of the water cycle. The atmometer, or ET gauge, measures something called evapotranspiration. Evaporation is when water from lakes, reservoirs, or oceans turns to vapor. And transpiration is the same thing, just via plants. Together we call that evapotranspiration, and it's a huge part of the water cycle. Farmers like to know not only the amount of water they receive from the sky, but they also want to know how much water their crops are losing back to the atmosphere. The atmometer is probably the most expensive tool that we use, so it's not ideal for everyone. With that said, it's completely optional and not at all required to be a Kokoraz volunteer. Another part of the water cycle is called infiltration, which deals with how water interacts with soils. Here, we measure soil moisture with very basic equipment, a trowel, metal ring, and an oven. This is extremely helpful data when assessing the categories of drought and the health of watersheds, and is also valuable for agriculture. The last set of tools on our list are your senses. Your first-hand observations of what you directly see, hear, and experience are very valuable data. This includes what you might report in the observation notes box found on your daily and multi-day accumulation report forms. You can also use your senses to provide additional information when submitting a real-time hail or significant weather report. There's also condition monitoring reports, where you can report the condition of plants, trees, waterways, and wildlife or other important information such as drought. And don't hesitate to explore other reports such as frost, optics, snowflake type, and thunder where your eyes and ears are your scientific instruments. As you see, using simple and cost-effective tools, Kokoraz volunteers can collect data at many points of the water cycle. These data are important to many and increases our collective understanding of how our world works. If you're not a volunteer already, learn about joining at www.kokoraz.org.